interested over your uh, data and video here. Lots of good stuff to work on. So the first thing that I want to really highlight is looking at the graph here for our breaks. So the first thing oops, I like to do really is kind of draw a line at the top here and really study I don't know, how hard we're breaking in each corner and does it make sense, right? And does our peak break pressure come in the right corners and do all of the other corners have a relative uh kind of the right type of pressure relative to the type of corner. So we see immediately here, our peak brake pressure comes right at the toe of the boot. That's perfect, exactly where it should come. So I love that. Second thing I like here, turn one should be our second highest brake pressure on the racetrack. That makes sense. So now what we start to look at are some of these other brake zones. So we have into the bus stop here. We have down into the laces here and then turn eight, turn nine and turn 11. So when I look at these brake pressures, what stands out to me is it looks like our bus stop brake zone could deal with a little bit more of initial brake pressure. We're kind of looking at 67 bar versus 76 bar into turn one. And I usually I'm breaking and initially as hard as I am in turn one, the same type of initial brake pressure into the bus stop. So I think we're not getting the most out of our brakes here into the bus stop. But this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. So what you'll start to notice here is relative peak brake pressure in the bus stop is pretty similar to our peak brake pressure down into the lace, the 64 bar versus really 68 bar. And the type of corner here and the type of brake zone should be very, very different, right? So bus stop end of a long straightaway it's a bit of a tighter corner although it's you know still pretty fast there i want those hard hit of the initial brakes to really transfer weight to the front nose and get the car slowed down when you think about the laces this is a super long bending corner that's downhill so i really want to maximize my entry speed but one of the limiting factors here is if I break too hard, I'm shifting too much weight to the front nose, where if I try to break deeper, I'm going to start to lose the rear. So this is a corner where I'd actually like to see a lot less brake pressure, but a longer brake zone. That same note here is a little bit in turn nine, where I'd like to see it again, you have less brake pressure here, but again, I'd like to see it a little bit, still a little bit less and just a little bit longer. I'm gonna go to the video here in a sec to really get into that. The second thing as well is in turn 11, this is relatively probably a, a, a shorter, heavier brake zone that I'd like to see you have. I think we can get away with lighter brake pressure, which is going to help you roll in just a little bit more entry speed as well. The, we're, we're going to go to the video and kind of talk a lot about that. The, the next thing here is when you look at the slopes of the lines, you can kind of see here somewhat consistently where we're downshifting. We're not really um, great with our pedal pressure. If you have a little bit of heel toe in here, that might be going on. In fact, let me kind of manipulate this a little bit. Let's just really quick while I'm here. Yeah, so we, it does look like we're heel towing. It looks like when you're heel towing, you're releasing off the brakes and adding brake pressure back to it, which I really don't want to see. So let's work together on figuring out what's going on there, what's causing that, so that we can keep a more consistent brake pressure for the heel toes. One thing is a lot of, so pretend this is the brake pedal. Some drivers like to heel toe and have their foot like this and heel toe like that. Some drivers like to have the ball of the foot and do this. I am much more of a fan of the second one because it really puts the emphasis on braking and not slipping through the pedal. And I have been one of those drivers that used to downshift like this. I had a foot flip th slip through and I crashed because of it. So I'm a big fan of this. The other thing is I think this allows us to be a little bit more uh, specific with our brake pressure and a little bit easier for us to get that little bit of a blip without having to release off the brake pedal. So I want to fix that. So let's go now into the video and start to get a little bit more specific uh, into each corner. All righty. So we've got your fast lap here. Obviously our fast lap with a little bit of traffic into turn one, but I, I still wanted to use the stock because I don't think it really affected you. You got back online. You still broke really deep. If anything, this lap you broke too deep right? So our emphasis really in turn one is getting a good run out and a good exit. That being said, there still is a lot of speed that we can roll in here. So I like that you're being aggressive here and I like that you're trying to roll speed, but it's just too much, right? We missed the apex by a little bit. 
This is where I really want to see you getting aggressively back to throttle and then working it back to full throttle in a similar spot. We missed the apex a little bit this lap. I think that's actually a good thing. This is the type of mistake that is a good mistake because now your brain's saying, ah, oh, crap, that was just a little bit too much. Now I just need to back my brake zone up just a little, just a little, little bit and then hit execute on my apex and exit. And now you know you're at the limit. So I always like to highlight mistakes that I think are good mistakes. And this was one of those where it was just a little over the limit, but I, I, I like that. Um, so coming in here into the S's, ultimately, look, this is going to be a corner that we just got to slowly continue to work up to it. Um, if we really highlight this and what we can do, what I would like to see you do is slowly gain the confidence to try and hold full throttle just a little bit deeper, just a little bit deeper, just a little bit deeper, and then lifting and then working it back to full throttle. We know there's more grip available here. If you kind of see here our peak grip back in here is 1.1 Gs, but I know your car can do 1.4 because of the brake zone. So we know that there's more grip available for us there. We're, we're closer to the limit kind of here than we were back in there. So it's one of those things that I'd like to see you just slowly, slowly work up to it by trying to hold full throttle a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper with the same amount of lift. But ultimately, like there's nothing wrong technique wise. That's just a comfort level thing. That's a very kind of high risk. There is a high reward there from a lap time perspective, but just inch up to it. So now let's go into the bus stop, right? So we identified in the bus stop, we could be braking harder initially, right? So we're coming in, getting ready, getting ready, getting ready. Started to lift at the 500 board, braking here. I think we could probably get much closer to this 400 board if you get later and harder. So the first note is harder on the brakes into the bus stop. The second note for me is I want to see you just dump off of these brakes right now. I want to get off the brakes right now and coast over this curb. This trail breaking down to this apex curb is causing you to overslow. And the dynamic of this corner, I always feel like I'm trying, like I'm overslowing because I'm lifting earlier. But because of the dynamic of the corner, if I'm at the limit, I don't feel comfortable to trail break all the way down here because I'm always worried about the rear end. So I, I can't break much deeper than about that 400 board. So instead to work on rolling entry speed, I just get off the brakes. I coast over this and that allows me to be a little bit later to throttle. So because you're over slowing this corner, you're back to throttle now where I want to see you back to throttle here. And by rolling in more entry speed, by delaying that throttle, you're going to have a little bit less understeer through the middle part of the bus stop, which allows you to be a little bit more aggressively back to throttle. Ultimately, through here, we're really solid. So now into the carousel. Notice how you're really starting. You're starting your lift for the carousel, like right in line with the last curb of the bus stop. I want to be flat past that last curb for the bus stop, flat until about here. And this is where I'm lifting. And now I am getting all the way off the throttle. So I'm flat longer. I'm lifting all the way off and I'm coasting. That transfers a little bit more weight to the front end. And I'm, I'm going to have a little bit less understeer than you. So I lift all the way off and then back in here. This is where I start to feed the throttle back in. Feed, 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 feed. And there you're at the limit, right? You have a little bit of oversteer. You're at the limit of the car. Nothing wrong with that. You're back to full throttle here. You're letting the car be free. Your exit out of the carousel is phenomenal. Really, really solid job. I just think we could be a little bit more aggressive after the bus stop, driving at full throttle a little bit deeper in. Nice, smooth release. Coast, waiting for that front nose to get down to that curb. And then the same exit is what you've got right now. So now into the laces. I want to see you focus on a lighter brake application. So I am much lighter on the brakes here. I'm still braking. I'm still braking. I'm still braking. And then what I want to do here is this is a corner where I want to scrub speed with understeer. So this is a corner where I dump off the brakes right now, and I've got a very long coast period. So I come off the brakes. I don't trail brake much. And then the car's in understeer, and I'm using that understeer to slow the car down, slow the car down, slow the car down. And that's going to allow me to roll a little bit more speed and not be this early to throttle. So I'm able to roll a little bit more speed and really wait till this point to start to feed the throttle in. And notice how you're already back to full throttle pretty much at the apex point. It's a good indication that we're under driving the car. If you're able to commit back to full throttle at the apex, we're not really quite at the limit of the car yet. 
right? So this is about where I'm starting to really feed the throttle back in. And this is the area where I want to see you working it back to full throttle. So we can roll more speed to the middle part of the corner, be a little bit closer to the limit of the car. Once the car gets pointed towards that apex point, that's where we're feeding it in. And I want to be back to full throttle before we get out to this exit curve. So there's a little bit more on the table for us here. Into the toe of, uh, toe of the boot, let's take a look here. So I think phenomenal job on the brakes. I think phenomenal job waiting for the front end to point before we get back to it, working it back to full throttle. This all looks good to me. This is a corner where I do anticipate maybe being slightly early to full throttle, mostly because there's a shit ton of grip and we're really uphill as well. So toe the boot, I don't want you to change anything. I think you're perfect through here. Really, really like it. All right. So turn eight is the one corner where our peak brake pressure came at the end of the brake zone. So I just want to make sure that, A, I think we can probably get down to this 200 board in terms of a brake zone, be a little bit closer to that. And I want to see you get, make sure you're getting that aggressive hit of the brakes in here. Harder on the brakes now. And if you really look, let's take a look, a little bit of a release, a little bit of a release, a little bit of a release. Line-wise looks good. Good patience to throttle. Boom, back to full throttle if we didn't have a traffic in front of us. So let's be a little bit more aggressive on the brakes here and a little bit deeper into turn eight. All righty, turn nine, a little bit of traffic to slap. Let's take a look. Light on the brakes, big reduction of the brakes, off the brakes. So this lap, okay, a little bit of traffic. Um, and I think it was still your fast lap. Let me see if I can find another turn nine here. All right, this looks like a clean lap. Let's take a look here. Boom. So super aggressive on the brakes, off, and then back early to throttle. So on this lap, you are too aggressive on the brakes into turn nine. So turn nine, I want to be kind of like a five or a six pedal. And then right as I come over the crest, boom, I'm down to like a one pedal, right? So I'm super light, one pedal, one pedal, zero. I'm coasting, 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 feed the throttle and feed, 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 back to full throttle. So just work on a lighter brake application, much lighter as you come over the crest of the hill, but then extend the brake zone to be a little bit longer. So if I let me get back to turn to lap 11 here, which is your fast lap, boom, boom, boom. So obviously a little bit of traffic here. You did a better job braking lighter on this lap. Nose much lighter on the brakes coming off. I just would have liked to have seen you maybe get off the brakes even earlier, coast so that you can feed the throttle in just a car length or two later. But mostly turn nine, I'm pretty happy with. Again, we're not quite at the limit of the car here. Notice you're back to full throttle now. I'm usually trying to work it back, trying to work it back and back to flat closer to here. So just working a little bit more speed to the middle part of the corner. Alrighty. So 10 and 11, both corners, we need to up our entry speed. So into turn 10, you've got your lift here, but notice how we kind of have partial throttle and then we lift, right? So you kind of like lift, but then you kind of have a little bit of partial throttle. So we're coming in up shift and then partial throttle. And then we coast, coast, feed the throttle back in and you're already back to full throttle now. This is a corner where similar to into the S's, I want to see you try to carry full throttle a little bit deeper into this corner. So upshift, back to flat, and then lift, and then feed it in, feed it in, feed it in, feed it in, back to full throttle out over here. So if you're able to get back to full throttle at the apex point, you've overslowed the entry. Work on trying to commit to full throttle just a little bit deeper into that corner and maybe lifting a little bit less. Maybe you got a little bit of maintenance throttle through here as you can control through it. And then turn, turn, turn 11, once again, we're going to see we're overslowing the corner a little bit. And we know this because look where you're back to full throttle. And a corner like turn 11, I'm back to full throttle in this range here. So I'm rolling in more entry speed. So to be able to roll in more entry speed is what we talked about in that data. It's a little bit lighter of a brake application here. So I want to be lighter on the brakes, lighter on the brakes. And you can kind of see here, you're heavy on the brakes and you release off of it. And that's where that oversteer comes from. We kind of shift the weight too quickly here. So I want you really focused on lighter on the brakes all the way through here. It's not a big difference, right? Where you're at like a seven pedal, maybe I'm at a five pedal initially. And that lighter brake application, dumping off the brakes, coasting, feed the throttle in, full throttle, allows you to be just a little bit closer to the limit through there. We can kind of see right on your Gs. Let's take a look laterally. Your peak G 1.2, we've seen you be able to pull, pull 1.4. There's a little bit of banking here. You probably are closer to 1.5. So a little bit more speed available for turn 11. 
but really focused on that lighter brake application. So there's less weight on the front end, releasing off of it and coasting a little bit more into the apex, release off those brakes, roll speed. Um, so those are going to be the major notes. I think there's just a lot of grip at Watkins Glen, and we've got to be able to get comfortable using that grip, that additional grip that it really does provide us. Um, so let me know if you have any questions, man, but appreciate you kind of walking me through how to get that data set up um, and hopefully it all makes sense. Keep rocking it. We'll get you fast here.